One of my favorite things to do in my downtime, other than work in JavaScript or Desmos, is to play Powder Game 2. Even though it was made in 2011 and it looks like it's from 2001, there's a charm about moving different types of pixels around and seeing how they interact in a virtual environment. I like pretty much everything about this game except for the particle limit. It sucks and it means that at any point you can't use more than a third of the screen. So naturally I'm gonna dismantle this game, change the particle limit, then spend hours editing a video explaining how I did it. The main idea about this video is going to be how to look through compressed javascript gibberish to find what I want out of someone else's stuff, because I got asked that once. Also, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a javascript expert, I'm just a high schooler with too much free time. Okay, so first I want to get my hands on an offline copy of Powder Game 2. The reason why we want an offline copy is so instead of modifying the result of the code after it's already executed, we can modify it directly. This is analogous to how it's easier to remove a watermark from an original composition than it is to just remove it from the final image. Okay, so how do we get our hands on an offline copy? Usually I would use HTTrack, but it didn't want to cooperate, so I just copy-pasted everything of moderate importance from the sources tab into a folder. Usually when you do this and try to run the HTML file, it won't work due to cross-origin resource sharing policy, so make sure you run in localhost. Now we actually have a copy of our game we can work with. So, what does the source code look like? Not good. Maybe since we know our particle limit is 40,000, we could just do a quick control F and see if we could find it. Nothing. Maybe since the text dot is next to the amount of particles we have remaining, we could search for the string dot. At least this turns up something and we can change the string to see that this is indeed the string controlling the text dot. However, this is the extent of the usefulness of this discovery, as there are no obvious paths from here to the particle count. This means we're going to have to get creative. When the script is run, it's run inside of an iframe, which also contains the canvas it's drawing to. We can access all of the important variables in the script just by referencing the window of the iframe. So now, we can see what all of these variables are. That's a lot of variables, most of which have absolutely no importance to what we're doing. Instead of searching through these one by one, I wrote a script that lets us search for variables that have changed since last checked. For example, if I was looking for the variable that controlled whether our game was stopped or not, I could do some checks for variables that haven't changed. Then I could switch the state from start to stop or stop to start and check for variables that have changed. Doing this allows you to pin down specific variables and manipulate them. In this example, the variable VA controls starting and stopping with a value of 0 for start and 1 for stop. This is cool, but we aren't looking for a value that can change. We're looking for the maximum number of particles, and unfortunately for us, this number cannot be manipulated in-game. However, just because we can't find it directly doesn't mean we can't find it indirectly. If we use the same method, we can look for the variables that store particle data by manipulating particles and detecting changes. At the end, we're left with a few different variables, all controlling different aspects of the particles on screen. Now if we just focus on one of the arrays, say h, we can search for where h is defined and see that it's being initialized to an int32 array of length mf. If we look for where mf is defined, we see mf is being set to p plus 4e4. The e4 is the reason we couldn't find it by searching for 40,000, but now that we've found it, we can change the particle limit to anything we like. I prefer p plus 1.4e5 because it contains all particles on screen without creating too much empty space in the arrays. But you do you. Also, a quick PSA, I'm working on a pretty big project right now, so uploads may slow down temporarily as I'm trying to dedicate a lot of time to it. You can see my progress on my Reddit, I'll probably put a link in the description if I remember. That's all.